Ternung um, Spring well uh, It's a short week The preparations for this game also started uh, uh, Last week and uh, Early this week before we play uh, uh, Swallows uh, it's, a, it's a week with two games uh, with three days to recover and to to prepare ourselves for the next one, as we used to do with uh, normal protocols, with only three days in between, trying to recover the ones who play uh, as good and as quick as possible, and and pushing a bit more with the, the ones who didn't participate much. Uh, the mood in the camp it's uh, it's uh, obviously is is good after uh, the last result, the last performance. Uh, fully motivated and understanding the, the complexity of the next game one more time, but preparing ourselves as we used to do it. Thank you very much. Welcome, Aviva, freelance journalist for Soccer Laguma. Coach. You are playing against a team that uh, has reached the, the final of the Cali Black Label. Uh, wh what have you identified as their prowess and as well as their, their uh, 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 weaknesses going into the, this game that you might use uh, uh, against them? Well, we do respect every opponent no matter if they are playing finals or not playing finals. TS Galaxy is a team that is being uh, having a continuity in what they are doing with the same technical staff and same coach during a, a long period. Uh, and this season there's, there's uh, similitudes with the proposal uh, from the last season with uh, the introduction of new faces and and a couple of new things. It's a team that it's difficult to deal because they used to be energetic, good pace. They they are commit with the, with uh, their defensive organization. It's difficult to break them. Uh, good concentration during the 90 minutes. It's going to be a tough opponent, like every opponent used to be against us and used to look against us. So. It's not going to be different. We are used to. It's a challenge, a new one. And as every other week, we are uh, focusing in, in our own stuff and obviously trying to find one or two key things or key spaces that we can use uh, due to the, the, the opponent proposal. But at the same time, we are used to play against teams that when they are they are facing pirates, uh, usually try something different. But I don't think it's gonna be it's gonna be the, the case this time. But if it is, we are we are also ready because, like I said, we used to to spend more time and more energy thinking about our own stuff, our own things. Uh, but um, in our experience with uh, with the galaxy. We never get a, an easy game, and I don't think that this time is going to be an exception. We are in a moment of the season where, where the fight for the points is tough because I guess everyone wants to go to, to the end of the first part of the season in a good position, in a good place to, to start again after that. So uh, the points are very important for, for both teams. Uh, Coach, you've spoken at least in terms of how challenging it has been managing the workload with games coming in a short space of time. Um, obviously, there's a long half count break, but when the season returns, things are going to be shorter and games are going to be more compact. Um, how are you looking to ensure that um, the challenge that the team had in the first half of the season when games are coming in thick and fast is able to avoid going into the second half when it's going to be a bit tighter because of that long break. Um, and question a bit similar to Toby, 
um, as players, I mean, how are you guys handling the load, knowing that for, for some of you guys, the season doesn't necessarily end in two weeks, but there's also AFCON, and when you come back, it's also like a push to the finish. Well, um, I guess the the the, the key it's uh, to to have at least three days between games it used to be, I think, enough. Uh, sometimes it's not possible or was not possible in the past and becomes a challenge. But like in every other scenario, in the end, the key is that we can have uh, not. You, you like to talk about consistency in the results. I would rather to talk about consistency in what we do, in, in uh, be systematic. And one of the keys in those periods is about repeating, uh, or if it's not repeating, being close to repeat your your study level to to refresh when is a need, not because of the. The, the the fact that you're playing every two three days and you need to rotate like like you like to say the, that word of rotation. Uh, so when you manage to have consistency in your in your in the team that you are you are um, putting on the field in that period, usually you get you get the results that you are looking for. When it's not possible because of the the load of the games is too high or the injuries appears or the uh, suspensions because you get uh, too many yellow cards, whatever, uh, then becomes a challenge. But if you can have consistency in the system, I think that, like I said several times, they like to compete more than train, right? They like to play. So if they have enough time to, to rest physiologically and, and psychologically, and that means have three days, it's fine. If you get good results in that period, you used to be fine. The problem is if you lose, maybe if you go through a period where you are going to play five games in 20 days and you lose the first one, it becomes more difficult. You understand what I mean? Because psychologically, becomes uh, the challenge becomes even more difficult. So there's many things. Uh, we try with our resources to, to give the players a proper recovery. Right now, we have... Uh, December with uh, five games for us and after the break I don't think the schedule is going to be that tight unfortunately for us because we're not in Champions League anymore and uh, we have to deal with the, with the rest of the season in, in two competitions and the squad and the team is, is prepared for that it's not, it's not going to be a problem I think the question is that um, is it is it good for you to see that the players are getting along, even those who are competing for the same for the same position? Imagine that I say no. I I I'd rather them to fight every morning here. You know, no. Of course, the the cohesion within the group it's important. The like I used to say, uh, the the beauty of our job is is having the opportunity to achieve things together with one group, not as an individual, uh, having all of us the same importance. No one is more important than the other. And uh, the only thing that you can do it uh, with, with, uh, with truth, it's uh, having that, that kind of cohesion. And if, if what you say is, is how it is, because I, I didn't see it, so I cannot say. Uh, we're talking about two players fighting for the minutes in the same position. Uh, so it's a good symptom and, and it's good to see that uh, the player on the bench is, <coughs> is happy when, when somebody in his place, not, not his place, because nobody has a place, like own place, but you, I think you understand what I mean. It's, it's good to see that we all get happy when somebody is doing the things well. It doesn't matter if he's playing in my position or in other position. We try to, um, I'm, I don't want to sound like too naive, but but like I said, the beauty of what we are doing is that we're doing this together. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense what we do here every day. So I'm happy and glad to see the players celebrating or trying to encourage each other or trying to support each other. It's something that I see in. In the locker room, usually during the week, I didn't see what you mentioned before, but 
probably is a symptom of a good relationship and that's that's something good because what we do is about the relationships. We'll take the final three questions. After the coach Kamkhalo Mukhale from YFM coach, the breaks in between, do they play a positive or negative impact, especially when it comes to the rhythm of the team? I mean, I'm looking at the game against Chiefs. We played Chiefs and then there was a FIFA break. Upon the, the, the FIFA, uh, after the FIFA break, there was a game against Richards Bay. And then you had to make way for the for, for the Cullen Cup. And now you're playing Swallows and Tears Galaxy. Next week, it's another break in terms of the final. So the breaks in between, do you play a positive or a, a negative impact uh, to the team, especially when it comes to the rhythm? I think I did answer this question already not a long time ago. Um, so I have to repeat myself. Uh, first, there's nothing we can do about it. The schedule is what it is. I think uh, in probably this season we have quite a lot of breaks in a in a short space of time. It's a it's a topic to have a long long conversation about what is the best or what is not the best, but we take it like like a, something that we cannot influence so much and or complain or cry about it like i said before players likes to once you go to the competition to play every three four days especially if you are getting the results you you want to go to the next one when you are in a in a good space uh, if you ask me about i don't know beat, beat chiefs and wait 15 days to play the next game probably rather to play four or five days later but the rhythm is is uh, is what it is we we don't spend time thinking about such a thing we just now having three days to prepare the game against the galaxy is more than enough and uh, and uh, that's where our mind is right now and then once we finish the the game against galaxy hopefully we get the result and then we can have more time to celebrate and to prepare ourselves for the next one. I had never seen a long week like a something negative when we have the the possibility to prepare the game as soon as possible and we have the capacity to to manage the the load and the periods of resting for our players and uh, the schedule is what it is. We as a coaches we have zero influence in when we play and where we play and what time and when is the next one. So I don't, I just take the schedule and I try to make it as good as possible for my players. Coach, uh, with 12 points to play before the, the festive break and then we look at the gap between you and the lock leaders, 11 points. How much of a pressure is it to uh, to close down the gap and uh, in your view like are we gonna see this thing playing out again the same way we've seen many seasons ago what do you mean many seasons the race the race for the championship like it's one team that is dominating now sundowns 10 out of 10 80 points and you are sitting 11 points adrift but what is the question yeah, my question is, how much of a pressure is it pressure. to close this gap? Yeah, if you'll be able to make a difference this time, not for the race to pan out the same way we've seen in the previous seasons. Which seasons? <laughs> yeah, the previous season, Sundowns have been dominating, like they've been the ah, runaway okay, okay. leaders. Yeah. Okay. Normally, this is what they do it, and then it's not easy to catch up. Yeah, it's difficult, but we're not thinking about because it can be someone else who is leading the lock. I mean, we want to obviously be at the top in every competition. It's our aim, it's our objective, it's why we are uh, working to, no matter who is there uh, leading or who is dominating. Uh, you force me to repeat myself every press conference, guys. The at least I do feel the pressure when I don't know what I'm doing in whatever I do in my life. Uh, if I know what I'm doing, I don't feel any pressure. And that's what we try as a team, not me as a coach. I'm talking about the group. 
we know what we are doing, we know what we are trying to do, what we are trying to achieve, so there's no pressure. It's pressure about, sometimes we feel the pressure in the games for different circumstances, but not, not in our daily day. I don't wake up in the morning and I think, oh Jesus, what a pressure, because I want, no, it's, it's not like that. That's a different story. We try to be our our best version every day. We we manage to do it uh, in some periods in our time here together. Now there was a moment this season that we we lost points. Is a fact if we talk about results. Uh, but the level of our performances was was at, at most of the times huh, with. I will say two exceptions this season, two games this season where we were not in the level that that we want to be. Then the results uh, are never in control. That's something that you can see in our games, and you can also see in some other games that the results are not in control. You know, uh, but that there's nothing we can do about it. And uh, if you talk about the team who is leading the log, 30 points in 10 games there's that's something exceptional and it's something that is not only our responsibility to stop because we're going to face them two times per season in the league and the league is 30 games right so if you finish the season competing uh, against an opponent that wins every game there's nothing you can do more than congratulate them and uh, try again next time that uh, sooner than later is going to change. Did I say something funny? <laughs> no, you answered me. Okay. This okay. <laughs> Next question. <coughs> Thank you, Sister Andy, for affording me a second chance. It was our secret smile. Coach. You just come from a game and registered a victory in a game that is uh, dubbed as the original so way to derby. I feel so privileged to have played for both teams. Okay. Going into Kesa Chiefs derby compared to Morocco Swallows derby, how the, 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 the Chiefs Pirates, it's something else, obviously. It goes without saying. Um, it's it's uh, like a, it, it gets a different level uh, and repercussion, uh, even for you guys. I don't think we used to have a media day before Chiefs, but not before Swallows. So it's, you, uh, you tell me why. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's, you understand? Uh, Swallows is a special game for me, I can tell you, because was my, my first official match with uh, Orlando Pirates was in Orlando against uh, Morocco Swallows, 1-0, Evanga. And will be always, you know, in, in my memory for sure. I think both, both games are special. We're talking about teams in different moments, in different circumstances, in terms of uh, many things. Uh, budgets, uh, um, expectations, uh, fan base, a lot of things. But for me, I, I try to, like I, like I said many times, I try to not be so emotional about the way I approach the games. I try to be more pragmatic than anybody else in order to do my job as good as possible. And derbies are, are not exceptional. And the second question, uh, I. I don't know exactly what is the question. I mean, I, I don't used to make comments about other colleges' uh, comments. I think uh, Coach Compella is it's been around enough, and he he knows South African football much, much, much better than myself. So uh, I will always uh, respect his opinion about South African football, and there's uh, not much that I can add to to his opinion about about South African football, uh, yeah, that, that's all. One more question? Yes. Uh, I think, uh, Coach, William from SNC, I 
just want to I'm very close. Yes, um, of course, maybe I just wanted to follow up on uh, Daniel's question, but on a different, I was just looking looking back at the last season, especially the second round. You had a, a remarkable run in that space. I think from a, a possible 45 points, you got 33. Mm. Um, and it was just what? Uh, I think it was 11 wins um, in that period. Um, and th this was also the period that also linked with um, the future more of uh, Terence um, in, in, in that period. What are some of the positives that you would take from that run um, as you edge closer to the second round and finish of this and you're going on a long break? Um, and, and, and in previous breaks that we've seen you, there's a break where you came up with Salim last season, you came up with Terence, and we've been seeing some of the players who are coming back even now, you have Sesane on the bench. So as we look forward to the long break next month, um, what are some of the positives that you would like to take from the second round um, and, and maybe implement now? I'm trying, eh? <laughs> Uh, to be honest, uh, again, we, we, we want to beat Galaxy on Saturday. That's our obsession to, to collect as much points as possible. Right now, we're sitting... I, I, I hope I'm not wrong, but I think we're sitting with the same points that we collect last season in 15 games before we went to the, to the, to the break, to the halfway of the, of the league. We have the opportunity to improve that number right now with uh, with the upcoming games before we we go to this uh, famous break, and that's that's our intention. Game by game, we have the opportunity to collect three points. Three points is a lot, and we know because we do know. Trust me, how difficult it is for us to collect each point in this league, and uh, for different reasons. And our uh, all of our energy is there, and after that is going to be the next one. We travel into Durban again to to meet Arrows soon, and then Super Sport Stellenbosch. We have a really exciting month ahead of us, and we don't see farther than the next game because the moment that you do it, then your energy can be somewhere else, and we don't want to be we don't want to be there. You are asking me every time about the consistency of the team, but then you you asking me about January, February, March 2026 and 2019 and we we miss the focus. We want to be focusing in what's coming because there's nothing else than the next game in football. <laughs>